Hi everyone, Abby here, and welcome back to my channel for Tech Tuesday, or welcome if you're new. So today I'm going to be reviewing the new Garmin Epix Pro 42 millimeter. But before I get started, make sure to hit that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed, so you can stay tuned to all my new videos dropping weekly, and so you can help the channel grow. So I have this in the color Light Sand Soft Gold. So it has a light sand colored band, and kind of casing and it has soft gold colored accents and for those of you wondering no it is not silver no it is not yellow gold soft gold is this kind of gold color that Garmin made up now one thing I wanted to mention about the color here is that the color in person is very different than how it appears online it kind of looks even a little bit silver online but in person it's very gold it's kind of like a yellow gold mixed with a tinge of green and lightened a lot. <laughs> I don't know, it's really hard to explain, but the color that's appearing on camera is very accurate to how it looks in real life, in my opinion. Now, the first thing I'm gonna go over is the price. In the Sapphire edition, I have is 1,349.99 Canadian and 999.99 American, definitely an expensive watch. And I will say once again, this is a Sapphire edition. If you don't know what Sapphire is, the Sapphire here comes with a Sapphire crystal lens. So very, very hard, very durable material, virtually scratch resistant standard version is made with Gorilla Glass 3. So it's a weaker material. And when you are getting that Sapphire lens here, you are paying a higher price for it. So the standard version is about $100 cheaper depending on your area. So now I'm gonna go into the major spec highlights about this smartwatch so you can get an idea about what it can do. So I've gone ahead and listed a bunch of spec highlights on screen for you guys. Now these are the most important ones in my opinion, things such as sleep tracking, activity tracking, step tracking, stress monitoring, Pace Pro, women's health, 24 hour heart rate tracking, it has SpO2, you can track a lot of outdoor activities like surfing, open water swimming, rock climbing, and more. The good thing about Garmin here is that you don't need a smartphone to use it. You can use it completely independently of a smartphone. You can set it up without a smartphone and just use everything on it. So that's something that I do really like. And all right, guys, if you find this video helpful so far, please go ahead and smash that like button for me. I'd really appreciate it. This is what it looks like on me. And I do have a seven inch wrist. It's definitely, you know, not a super small smartwatch. It's not huge by any means. I have all the wrist sizes this can fit as well on screen for you. I am finding it very comfortable to wear. I've had no issues with skin irritation or anything else whatsoever. I also find it relatively lightweight. And quite honestly, do I put it on? I forget it. I'm even wearing it after about an hour or two. All right guys, so now I'm gonna talk about the display here. So this smartwatch does come with an AMOLED color display. So you can see bright, bold, punchy colors, lots of contrast there as well. Quite honestly, being sapphire glass, sapphire is more reflective than Gorilla Glass. But on the other hand, in my opinion, the sapphire glass just looks better than the Gorilla Glass smartwatches. With the sapphire glass, we are getting deeper blacks, we are getting more contrasting colors. Something about it just looks better to me, but with that, you do have the increased glare. Depending on the angle, it can get a lot of glare. And this is something that I do find pretty readable indoors. But when you're outside in direct sunlight, you really need to pump up the brightness there. If I'm going on a walk or just outside in general, I do find it can be a little bit hard to read with the AMOLED display here. And in those situations, I do find myself needing to pump up the brightness. A lot of you have been asking me what watch faces are on here, and I'm gonna show you guys watch faces. And as this is touchscreen, you know, you could swipe as well. So there's definitely a good amount of watch face options. Um, these are all the pre-installed ones that come with the watch. You don't have to go find these anywhere. You can also get extra watch faces from the Garmin Connect IQ app. So you guys can see there's a lot of different watch face colors and accent colors that you can choose. Basically every color under the rainbow. You can track your workouts, your daily activities, your metrics. For example, you can see some of the widgets I have installed. Garmin does call them widgets, they don't really call them apps, but you guys can see a bunch of them here and yeah you have the stock market which i found <laughs> pretty interesting you can see some stocks 
Now there are a bunch of different widgets you can have on the Epix Pro here. I really like this operating system because it's very streamlined, it's easy to see. You kind of just swipe up and down to get to things quickly and then you click on them and you can open it up in a bigger view. And when it comes to workouts on here, you can track a lot of different workouts. I love that you can do boxing on here. They believe the Epix Pro and Phoenix Pro series is the first ones to have boxing, so something that I really do like. And they do separate the workouts into categories, which I personally don't like. It takes longer to find things. <laughs> Showing you guys all of the activities on here because a lot of people want to know what they can track. One of the things you get with this premium price tag is the ability to track many, many workouts. Indoors, outdoors, more extreme sports like skiing, snowboarding, surfing as well. Still going guys, we have more still. <laughs> A lot of workouts on here. So if you guys are wondering, can it track that? Well, <laughs> this is the section for you. So I have the version with the North American maps pre-installed and it also comes with hundreds of ski maps and golf courses all pre-installed for you. And when you are actually working out, if you're doing an outdoor activity like a walk or a bike ride, for example, you have your maps there as well. So I'm gonna show you guys around me and you will basically get a map of what's around you and you can move the map. This is something that I really like for going on vacation. If I did not wanna go and pay for like a data plan if I didn't have any Wi-Fi available, I can just turn on points around me and it helps you find stores close to you, restaurants, movie theaters, a bunch of different activities and stuff to do, which is really cool. You can get free directions all from your smartwatch here, all built in. And when it comes to GPS performance with this smartwatch, I have had zero issues. It has been very reliable for me. It connects quickly outdoors. I haven't had any droppage at all and it's been accurate. All right guys, and so now I'm gonna be talking about women's health. So for my male viewers out there or anyone else who doesn't wanna watch this section, you can use my timestamps I have in the description below and along the video here to jump to the next section where I'm gonna be talking about sleep tracking. So for women's health, we do have two options available. Garmin does have the pregnancy kind of monitoring tracking widget and they have the general women's health which is going to track your menstrual cycle. See the day you are in your cycle and track your daily mood, symptoms on your period. You can track your flow intensity. I like that we have a wide variety of symptom choices. and you can track your mood. And I've said this before, I'm saying it again, I love that Garmin gives you a bunch of mood options here. Because a lot of the time, a lot of smartwatches just say like happy, sad and stuff like that. And I'm like, no, I want more options here, you know? You can also track your discharge if you're having any discharge. As well as if you're ovulating, you can mark that down. You can also track your sex drive, women's health, section on the app. We have a period prediction, which predicts your period every single month. In my experience, it has been spot on accurate. So that's something you have in the app as well. And this is something that I personally find very helpful. So you guys can see here, I have a sleep score from last night at 75%, a sleep quality message, which says I slept fair. And then it has a interrupted as you know that message here. Here you can see my entire sleep graph for last night. It shows the time I fell asleep and the time I woke up. Here is just that same information in a different format so you can see it a little bit easier, break down a little bit of a sleep message. When it comes to Garmin, I think that they do a really good job at tracking when I fall asleep and when I wake up. It's just their sleep stages for me are not very accurate. This is probably one of the better sleep tracking watches I have seen from Garmin so far in my experience. I'm finding it pretty good. On this smartwatch, we do have Garmin's newest Elevate 5 heart rate sensor. Now, this is Garmin's most accurate heart rate sensor I have seen to date. 
I will say that Garmin's, you know, older heart rate sensors, the Elevate 4, Elevate 3 even, are still being used in a variety of Garmin smartwatches recently released, such as the Vivo Move Trend. All of Garmin's heart rate sensors have been good in my opinion. This one so far I have seen to be the fastest at tracking quick heart rate changes, like if I'm doing a HIIT activity. I'm also seeing more accurate sleep tracking, which I think has to do a bit with the new heart rate sensor here as well. Possibly in the future, some ECG capability. So this smartwatch has a quoted battery life up to 10 days. Now with my usage, things like GPS walks and runs, doing indoor cycling, daily alarms, timers, and more. I've gotten on average six days of battery life with this watch. If I do turn on the always on display, I've gotten three days of battery life. I wasn't able to push it longer than that. Now I will say of course that the results I get could be different from what you get. As we all use our smartwatches differently, you could end up with something higher or lower than myself. Now that's definitely less battery life than I thought I was gonna get to be honest. If you are comparing this with non-Garmin smartwatches, six days is really good seeing that most of them last, you know, 24 to 48 hours. But comparing this to Garmin watches, it's a little bit lower than expected, especially for a smartwatch of this price range. For example, comparing some other AMOLED smartwatches from Garmin, the Garmin Venue 2S, better battery life than the Epix, the Garmin Venue 2 Plus, better battery life than the Epix, the Garmin Forerunner 265S, also better battery life than the Epix here. Another thing all of those smartwatches have in common is that they are hundreds of dollars cheaper than the Epix Pro here. All right guys, so one cool new feature on the Epix Pro series here is the flashlight. And I'm also gonna compare it to my phone's flashlight, the Z Flip 4. First, I'm gonna show you guys all of the settings here. So for the flashlight, we have five settings. We have four settings for the white light and then we have a red light option. Red. And the red light really just comes with one kind of brightness setting. And then we can go up to the white light on the lowest setting, which in my opinion, very dull, really does not do much of anything. Next, going up in brightness here. We can see that one's a bit brighter. Definitely more useful. Now going up to the third brightness level, which is what it comes default set to. And the highest brightness setting. So here is my smartphone at level one. Here is my smartphone at level two brightness. Level three, level four, and level five. So my smartphone's brightness is a lot brighter than the flashlight on the watch in my opinion. So once again, I'll turn on the brightest setting here. So just look at that. That's the brightest setting on the watch, brightest setting on the smartphone. So I know some people are saying that it's basically the same as your smartphone, but I don't find that. You guys can see, for one, the smartphone a lot wider of a light and a lot brighter. On my wrist, you kind of got to angle your arm around and it's not the best usage experience, so to be honest, for most situations, I would be using my smartphone because it's easier for me to just hold my smartphone like this than it is for me to angle my wrist around trying to light up a room. One way I think this could be useful is if you're going to the bathroom at night and you don't want to turn on the light, maybe you're going to wake up your partner beside you, you can just quickly turn on the flashlight here and be able to kind of illuminate your way. Also, a way that I have used it is if I've gone for an early morning bike ride or walk, I have turned on the flashlight here and I've used the pulse mode. That's another feature that is pretty cool about it. You can kind of turn on the strobe light and you could have it blinking. And there are different settings here. Then we also have a custom one, the blitz, the beacon, pulse. It can help people see you from a long distance away. So very good safety feature is there. The flashlight I think is a pretty cool feature. Do I think that it's worth buying this for the flashlight alone? No. It's something that I don't think is like a necessary feature for myself, but I think a lot of people will like it. And one thing I will say about the flashlight is using that will drain your battery life more. So keep that in mind. I have noticed some cons about this smartwatch. 
So the first con for me is this smartwatch did not come with a lot of widgets and apps pre-installed. There was a lot of things I had to download, which is just, you know, it's extra time that you don't want to spend when you're setting up and using a new smartwatch. Another con for me is that, like I've mentioned before, the battery life with the always on display on is very poor. That's something that I do not like very much at all because if you're going to be offering always on display, I think it should have more than like three days of battery life. And for a smartwatch of this price point, of this size, with this size battery, all of this stuff, I really was expecting better battery life. Another con for me is, well, it's more of a personal thing, but we only have three color options here. To be honest, I don't love any of the color options. The final con for me is that this smartwatch has been a little glitchy. So by that, I mean sometimes when I'm swiping, it doesn't register my swipe. And the watch races that I have downloaded, so for example, there's this one right here. I will find that the colors will just randomly change. It's something that is weird. And as you guys can see, and another one, for example, here, like it's supposed to be purple font here, but sometimes it's purple, sometimes it's white. And then sometimes when I'm using it, you can see it just got really small and it's kind of jumping around. This doesn't happen on other smartwatches that have this exact same watch face that I have. This could be the developers, you know, maybe they need to refine their stuff. But the first one I showed with the flowers is the Garmin watch face. Garmin made it, it's not external. Sometimes when I'm pressing the back button, it just doesn't do anything. I think that's something that's probably gonna be fixed over time with future updates. All right guys, so considering the price, the quality, the comfort, the performance, the battery life, the color, and everything like that, I would go ahead and give this an 8.7 out of 10. I definitely do give it a thumbs up. So if you guys are looking to pick up the new Garmin Epix Pro 42 millimeter here, I've gone ahead and left a link down in the description for you to use. And for those of you who stuck it out with me to the end of the video, thanks for watching this far. And as a sneak peek on what's coming soon, I'm going to be doing a comparison on the Garmin Epix Pro here to the Garmin Phoenix 7S. So make sure you subscribe with your post notification bells turned on so you don't miss that video. And if there's anything I missed today that you want to know, just go ahead and drop a comment below. Thanks for watching guys and make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Bye.